Vice President Biden reached out to me probably about 10 days after Jamie was killed on the phone. And I was shocked when the voice on the other end of the phone was Vice President Biden. I was even more shocked when we were still talking probably 45 minutes later. And during that phone call, he spoke to me, um, well, before he even spoke to me about his grief and what he's been through, he wanted to know about my family, he wanted to know about me, about Jamie, about Jesse, and about my wife, Jen. He just wanted to know who we were and what we were about. Um, and then he talked to me a bit about his family and what loss was like for them and how he got through it. And I'll never forget two words that he used with me, mission and purpose. Um, and, and I said to him, I said, that's kind of the way I'm feeling as if I need, it's like, this is now my purpose and this is what I need to do. And, and, and I just, he said, listen, he goes, you'll figure it out. He goes, this, this conversation needs your voice. And he goes, and I'll always be here if you need my help. And he meant it. Um, and then he invited me to uh, an event he was doing in Florida a few weeks later. It was a fundraiser. And bear in mind, he wasn't running for the presidency at the time. This was a fundraiser for Bill Biden's foundation. Um, and I went with another one of the Parkland dads. I had thought that when we got there, you know, we would kind of shake his hand. Um, shocked when he pulled us aside into a private room because he had 200 something people waiting to hear him speak. And again, even more shocked when about 40, 45 minutes later, he was still talking to us. About 20 minutes into that conversation, I, I said to the vice president, I said, you have a, like a room full of 200 people waiting to hear you speak. And he just said to us, this is more important. That's the kind of guy he is. During that conversation, he said something to myself and the other dad that probably has been the single most helpful thing anybody has said to me since losing my daughter. And he talked to us about going through this with our families and how no two people go through grief the same way and to be prepared for that. And he talked to us about the reality of how many marriages fail after something like this and how um, many families encounter tough times after moments like this because people aren't prepared to go through it differently. So, and he said, he's like, I'm not trying to scare you. He goes, but I want you to have a plan. I want you to know how you're gonna get through this with your family, going through it differently, but being able to support each other as you go through it, the ways that you need to get through it. Um, he was a thousand percent right. And because he gave us the heads up then, it gave me the ability to make sure I'm always working on that and that my family is gonna be okay. Did you hear from the president? I did not. Um, I did not hear from the president um, then. And I really um, got angered by the president only days later um, when we were burying my daughter. Uh, the morning that we buried my daughter, the president put out a tweet talking about what happened in Parkland and he blamed it on the Russia investigation. And he politicized the murder of my daughter. Uh, I was enraged, <laughs> to be quite honest. And uh, when I read the tweet, I just got into this mode of, of being so angry. And my wife was just trying to tell me to let it go forget about it because we need to get on to our funeral for my daughter, but I couldn't. And the way I get through things, it's, the, it's really become my tool is to write. It gets things out of me. It gets them off my chest. So I sat down and I rewrote the ending of my eulogy for my daughter um, because it helped me to just kind of get it out of me. And um, 
after that became public, um, I really didn't think I'd ever hear from the president again. And I haven't. And I'll be real honest with you at this point. There's no need to. Um, he has failed on this issue. He has used this issue for political purposes. He's not going to stop being who he is. And I just want to be certain that I play a role in helping to have him fired.